So today we're working on our oil pump from our 911E engine and there's not a lot that we can do with oil pumps uh, but they're also a lot stronger than people give them credit for. So this is our pressure side of the pump. This is what pumps oil in from the tank. It comes in on this side, comes out through here and pressurizes throughout the engine, supplies oil to our bearings, camshafts, all of our lubrication requirements. This side of the pump is the scavenge side. It picks up oil from right here in the crankcase and sucks it back in and this is what returns it back to the oil tank. Now you can see the differences in the sizes. The pressure pump size is considerably smaller than the scavenge pump side. Now Porsche throughout the year models this changes quite a bit. Uh, this pump is a fairly early magnesium pump. It's not the earliest one. Uh, these were used from late 69 through around 72, 73 ish. Three rib pump, one, two, three. Uh, the next step up in size was with these was a four rib. And what they did, that was used in the 2.7 liter engines in 1974. And what the biggest change was is the size of the actual pressure pump increased and the size of the scavenge pump decreased. Now that prompted the oil bypass mod along with a, a couple of other oil modifications on the pressure control systems. Uh, we do have videos on those if you want to go and look at those things. So for right now we're just going to go ahead and tear this pump down, clean it up and see if it is usable. So the first thing I want to do is there's two pins. There's a pin here and a pin here. Before I undo the nuts I want to drive these pins out. So these pins are lo locating pins and these are designed to locate everything together and not rely on the screws to hold everything in alignment. And then our six millimeter nuts on the back here is what holds everything down and together. Okay, once I've got my screws out, I'm just gonna very gently tap this apart. Okay, so here's our pressure pump side of the housing. Looks pretty nice. No major scoring. Everything feels pretty good. Then with our gearing, what we're going to do here is we're going to bring our scavenge. I've already removed the circlip from the front of the input pump input shaft. So I'm going to bring our separator, our cast iron separator paint plate out and now this is where we can actually see our gears. Now with the gearing these can take a little bit more abuse than people really give them credit for. Uh, it's more of an issue with our end play on the gears, and we'll take a look at that in a little bit, uh, than it is for our wear in this part of the pump. Now, pumps will tend to consume a lot of different things, so little bits of metal and brass will go through, and that will make some imprints on our gears. But as long as the gears themselves are not heavily worn, those small imperfections really don't account for much. So let's slide these apart. And on this, what you're going to see is one shaft is smooth. And then on our driven shaft, we've got a keyway that locates those two gears. 
pop that out. That's it. So that's our pump in pieces. Now we're just going to go ahead and clean everything up so we can see what we're looking at and uh, take a look at some measurements. Yeah. All right, so now that we've got our oil pump all cleaned up and on the bench, we can go through and have a good look and really kind of see if this is going to be usable or whether we have to replace it. Now, Porsche never meant for these pumps to be rebuildable, so they did not make individual parts available. And the way it works, if you buy a pump from Porsche, it will supersede to the next, uh, well, to the latest and highest version, which is the 3.2 pump, which means it changes the pickup assembly and you have to use a different sump plate. So with that in mind, first thing I'm going to look at is my gear condition. And what I'm looking for here is if we look at the end uh, view of the gear, we can see how it kind of swells out in the middle of the gear. And I'm just looking to see, I have seen these worn to the point where this is straight across here, in which case I would not reuse it. But all of these gears, this is how they mesh and they roll on that piece. Uh, the gear condition is actually pretty good. There's some small marks, some small scoring on the outside, but ne definitely nothing that would concern me about using them again. That's on the scavenge pump side. And we look at the other gears. Same thing, small scoring. This is normal. Would not be concerned about using that again at all. Okay, our pressure gears. Same thing I'm looking for there. Okay, we can start to see a little bit more wear right here. Uh, so on this one, We've got a definite line or groove that's been worn into that gear right there. And we can also see if we look at the end profile, how it's starting to flatten out that rounded side of that pump gear. This is getting to the point when we see wear like this, this is too much. I uh, would definitely not want to use this pressure gear again. So effectively, this both of these gears are going to be in the same boat as they've been running together. Uh, you can see here where that's definite flat spot on that gear. So these are worn out, no good. So with just the gears alone, it's time for a new pump. But let's assume that the gears were reusable. So the next thing I'm going to look at is my end housing. This is my pressure housing. What I'm looking for here is any heavy scoring, and it's got to be pretty heavy, or a substantial lip on either side of this pressure housing. The other important thing that I want to check is that when my shafts slide in, that this tolerance right here is nice and tight. If this elongates or wears, what will happen is this will move up and wear into the housing on that pump, which will cause it to wear out the gear and wear out the housing and also cause it to fail. This one actually feels pretty good. Nice and tight. Let's go to the other side. That one feels pretty good. And there's no real movement in that pin to housing. I mean, there has to be some, but it's very small. Let's look at our pressure side next. So in our scavenge housing. So what I'm looking for here is the same things that I'm looking for on the pressure side. Now this one has a wear where you can see where the two gears come together on the shaft and there's a groove right there. I took my bearing scraper just to see how thick that was and it's fairly uh, fairly big 
The other issue I'm having is right here, I've got quite a lip. I don't think it's hard. I don't think you can see it on the camera, but I can certainly feel it with my finger where it comes up. So these gears have worn up into that housing. So usually what that leads me to believe is our front bore here is most likely also going to be outside of spec. And when I put my shaft in, it is. We can see we have a large amount of side-to-side -side slop. And I'm just going to move the gear from the bottom. It's the easiest way to see it. And so what's happening is this shaft that is sitting here, as these, the way that oil comes in is through our pickup here, and the engine drives that housing. It's turning through here. That load going through is trying to force those gears apart. Uh, as the oil gets squashed through these gears and pumped through the housing and out to back to the tank and what it's done is it's caused this front bearing area or support area to wear. Now just to show you the difference if I come in on the bottom side even though it's been under the same load substantially less. Okay, so we've already inspected our gears and let's, for argument's sake, say everything was usable on our housing. If I were to rebuild this pump, a couple of things that I would do. Uh, one is we've got some slight wear on here where we can feel that the gear has moved into this sandwich plate. Now the end parts of the gears are actually more important than the actual gear faces themselves. If you have a lot of end clearance on a pump, it will tend to want to, the oil pressure will tend to want to squish out and you'll end up with a low oil pressure and a low delivery volume. So normally what I would do if I was reusing, so if my gears were usable, my housings were usable, I would take this on my flat piece of glass with some 400 wet and dry, figure eight, smooth that out, make sure this is perfectly flat. Uh, also would do the same here on my housings, making sure that these are perfectly flat and it's more, it's not that we're going to put a sealant or a gasket there, it's more we just want to make sure there's no possible spaces that we can have oil leaking out under pressure that would reduce the efficiency of the pump. And the same goes for our front housing. If this was reusable, I would flatten, I'd pull the studs, flatten this housing, put the studs back into it. One last thing is I want to talk about the pickup tube. Now these are glued in at the factory and they can be removed. If you apply some heat here, uh, it will melt the glue and you can pull it out. Usually I leave them intact unless there is an issue. If it's loose and I can grab it and move it, well then I'll pull it out if I'm using everything else and reset it. Now you've got to be very careful when you do that. Getting it orientated correctly is extremely important. Uh, not so much on the early models, but on the later models, the SCs, where they use a solid strainer with a dish. If you don't get this pipe back into the right place, then the strainer plate won't line up and you'll have all kinds of issues. Usually you don't find this out until you've got the case assembled and sealant on it. So very, very important when you're doing that. So another reason why I would want to change from an early pump to a later model pump is the volume of oil that the later pumps can flow. Now we already know with the 27 engines they increased the pump size quite dramatically and that's what spurred the uh, bypass modification that those cars needed. But things like if you are planning on adding an engine oil cooler or an auxiliary engine oil cooler up front, uh, so you've got to pump oil th all the way through those lines and then back into the engine. Another reason too would be if you were going to be installing the late model uh, timing chain tensioners. So the late model timing chain tensioners are literally a calibrated oil 
leak inside the engine. Having a better volume of oil or a greater volume of oil flowing through the engine is going to be advantageous for keeping uh, oil temperatures down, especially pushing it through a cooler, keeping more constant oil flow through your timing chain tensioners and out to all your bearings are also other reasons why you would look at updating to a later style pump. Okay, so as far as this pump goes, this is pretty much the end of it. We will hang on to the, these gears. I'll hang on to this plate. I'll hang on to our end housing, our uh, woodruff key out of here. I'll hang on to that. But pretty much this housing and these gears are done. So it's time for a new pump. I'll take a look and see if we have any other rebuildable cores in the shop. If not, we will be purchasing a new one for this car.